Let's talk either. about the current Browns QB1 here. And before we do that, you can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Oh, man, Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to chilling. go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Over the weekend, Mary Kay Cabot reported that Deshaun Watson's first rehab throwing session in Los Angeles went successful. He's joined by David Njoku and his quarterback trainer, Quincy Avery, for this rehab process. And Njoku was kind enough to hop on the QB Unplugged Lockerverse podcast with Quincy and Deshaun to talk about the 2023 season, getting ready for 2024. And there was one bite in particular that we're going to play here in a sec that kind of stood out. It was David Njoku speaking about the toughness Deshaun uh, displayed during that 14 for 14 second half performance against Baltimore. I want to warn you. Playing on a bad ankle. Playing on a bad ankle, a bad shoulder. He does curse in here. We do not uh, advise for explicit language, but you can't bleep stuff out of tag board. We so, curse. Well, he says an, a word we don't use. Okay. So I just want to let people know. It's not a word that no one on our audience has ever heard. I'm sure before. you've heard it. But if, you, okay. if you've got a young child around and you don't want him yes. to hear it, here's your warning. I'll just give you the warning. Just, uh, and then the school. question... <laughs> question after we play this yeah. clip is knowing what we know about the injury the opponent we're now almost six months removed from that performance have we forgotten how impressive that second half performance against baltimore was here's david and joku on the toughness that sean watson showed but no one knows how hurt he really is <laughs> like we don't yeah. know i knew how hurt he was yeah. right and the There's, team did the, the, the guys right. on the team but yeah. you hear all these other people like oh he's soft he's not really doing this that and the third how do you as a teammate be like making sure people know like nah we we know man we know our go. guys really you know what i'm saying man, on some on some real shit man 98 percent of things that happen to us to sean and myself or whoever nobody knows and that's what hurts the most is because you know you have a guy like Deshaun who is literally i mean i mean listen i'm not i i keep it real mm -hmm. all right Keep it a bean. <laughs> I've had a high Englishman before. Mm -hmm. That bitch hurts like a motherfucker. <laughs> hey, yeah. That shit hurts so bad. I, I couldn't walk. I mm -hmm. thought I was a big old macho man. I couldn't do nothing. He tore his shoulder, right? Tore? Tore my shoulder. And fresh, had a high Englishman in the same game and still beat the juggernaut Ravens. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's something that people don't really like comprehend the right way. You know what I mean? And seeing all that stuff on social media and stuff, it, it's, it's, it's sad because... It's you know the uh, you know the, the saying ignorance is bliss. In this case, it's not really bliss because you don't know, and it's it's you don't know all the efforts and stuff but do, like you know bring done behind closed doors that, that we do that he does. You know what I mean? So it's 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 tough because I know he's he, he's strong minded, but that like you just don't like seeing that, especially when you're giving it your all for you know a city. But no one knows. Hmm. Thoughts on the comments, and have we forgotten how impressive? And how incredible that performance so, was. So for me, I, I watched this, and I remember telling you about this Saturday. Um, the NFL is a results-oriented business, right? And fans will voice their displeasure when they don't get their ROI, their return on an investment. And so what's the return on investment for a fan? It's time, it's, it's, it's money, it's, it's emotional, right? That's yeah. what it is. You spend right. money on tailgating. You spend money on going to these games. Uh, you spend time, time that you could be doing, doing other things that might be more productive than, than watching the sport. And if you're a Browns fan, if you're in this city, the emotional investment that most of us, us have in sports is, is mass. It's, it's, it's up there. And to watch this podcast and to hear David Njoku talk about the 98% of what they go through the public never hears about it. And then he talks about the 2% that might get out there and, and was put out there. I can understand how it can be hard to ignore that. I can understand the, the frustrations that might come with that. I don't think these players have an issue with constructive criticism. I don't think they have an issue with being criticized at all. I think that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. I think what a lot of the players have an issue with is the disrespect. Because, you know, he didn't play this part of the clip, but there's a part of the clip to where Deshaun Watson says sometimes these athletes come to social media as an outlet or just to see some news or break from their everyday reality. You, fans don't often know how much some of these players care 
about the Cleveland Browns organization, about the city of Cleveland and the fan base, right? These dudes can be behind closed doors, like, like giving their all and putting forth the best effort, but they will get disrespected because the effort don't always equal out to the result that the fan wants to see. Yeah. And so like it, 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 I can understand why. And it was cool to get that perspective of like, listen, we are going hard for the city. We going hard for the Cleveland Browns and we put ourselves through so much to make sure that we can come out here and at least give the effort and to go back and see somebody being disrespected because the results didn't yield what you wanted. Knowing that I gave my all, I can understand how that can bother you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I look at it. Um, in terms of this and, and one of the things that I, I look back and, and say sometimes I, I always give you and say, you know, he's played 11 games. There's, a, you know, there, he's been injured. That part of it, you know, kind of takes away from it. Uh, he's been suspended. So people don't get their ROI on that. But I had to learn and I, I, I ask myself this. It's like there's a difference between you starting a relationship with somebody um, in elementary school or somebody in high school. You got friends that you may have had since you was grade school this high. You know what I'm saying? You guys drank juice, took naps together, super pause. Um, but, you know, you was young, <laughs> little kid, and you, you grow up, you fight, and it's all good. But then you get to high school, you may just know somebody, right? You get to high school and you acquaintance, you in, in the class together. It's a different level of, of what you'll take from somebody because guess what? At this point, you, we old. How many new friends do you get? <laughs> like, right. like you, you just don't get no new friends, bro. You, you, like, if you came home and you, you introduced somebody to your wife, say, hey, this is my new friend, John. She look at you crazy. Like, dang, Jay, you got to pick up John. John, you, you, you just pick up friends? Where did this happen? And that's the same way it happens <laughs> with, with, with Deshaun Watson and, and quarterbacks. Like, I realized that when you draft Baker Mayfield, you're invested. You went through the whole offseason picking the best quarterback, right? Then you get to see him walk across the stage. They put the jersey up. They get the hat. They do all the interviews. Then you go through the record-breaking first year. Then it's like the Jets game. Then he breaks the passing records. And then you go through ups and downs and injuries until finally you get to see it all the way out till you win a playoff game. And for me, I didn't understand why there was an attachment level like that. But you have to realize it. When you go through all them life's goals, somebody could have met. Like, you could say, I, Baker Mayfield, I remember watching him in college, man. And then I got married and had kids. And Baker Mayfield was the, co the quarterback of my team. This is like, you went through some stuff with this man. So he going to get the benefit of the doubt. So sometimes I would be like, but Baker played like 80 games. Brian Hoare played all these games. Brandon Wheaton. Why does it seem like they get that benefit of the doubt? And then I realized, John Watson is your high school friend. He's the guy you just started working with. He's a dude like that was in the office for two weeks. And then he said something crazy. You're like, I don't even like you, bro. <laughs> just off one comment. But that's been right or wrong or indifferent. That's how we look at people and, and, and how they're endeared to us. So it's, it's tough for Deshaun or, or guys to be like, hey, man, why ain't everybody buying in? Like, he did all this on one leg and his shoulder and all this other good stuff. But the reality of it is that ain't, that's just regular stuff. You ain't, we ain't grown with you. We ain't bought into you yet. And, and it's difficult to do that. Before you go, Jay, I just want to respond to that. I got to get some pushback on that a little bit because David Njoku was drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about return on, on investment <clears throat> or the effort not necessarily yielding the results that fans wants to see, mm -hmm. I think he's a prime example of that. He's a dude that was a first round pick that for the first three years of his career, first five, Cle first three, four, five, Cleveland Browns fans were hot and cold with David Njoku mm -hmm. because they wasn't receiving, they wasn't receiving return on investment. They seen this dude that's a physical freak of nature, mm -hmm. but he was consistently inconsistent as a player. And what happened? The return on investment changed. You start seeing David Njoku like ball out, develop as a player more and more. And now it is, he's one of Cleveland's favorite sons. He's one of Cleveland's favorite players. Yeah, that's a good example. But, but and, I, will, I will give you pushback on that. But if he was not drafted by the Browns, he oh, would have been gone. But lot, I, I, will, I, I, I will say this though. The issue I believe that fans have is because they're not seeing the return on investment with Deshaun Watson, right? They can see the effort and they can respect the effort, 
but that don't mean that they don't feel some type of way. That don't mean yeah. that they don't, they're not like internally frustrated. And because I think they know his potential and they know he's, he's better. He, he's, he's capable of playing better than what he's played. Right. And I think that if he was to go out here, stay healthy for 17 games and like ball his ass off, play his ass off and like really lead the Browns to the promised land. I don't think we will have conversations going forward about his, his, his lack of, about his commitment, his effort, his play, et cetera. So I, I, I just think he got to go out there and perform. I agree. There is something to what G says about your status in the fandom based on how, are you, how you were, acqu- were acquired. But I'll, I'll use as another example, Joe Flacco. We didn't draft Joe. Right. In fact, Joe was our mortal enemy for 10 enemy. years. He was the really? ops. He was our mortal enemy. We hated that man. He came in here in two weeks. We loved him. Still Why? Because he won. It's a, you said it, it's a results-oriented business. You win, you get the biscuit. You lose, you get the bitching. And that's how it goes. And I talked earlier in the show about two things that I'll bring up again. The, the social media thing. He knows how the fans individually feel because mm-hmm. he's out there looking for it. He says he does. He sees everything that's put on his name on social media. Mm-hmm. Why would anybody ever Google themselves on social media? I don't know. Because you're going to get the good, but you're going to get the bad too. And you're going to be affected by it. Tune out the noise. It's noise. It doesn't matter. I've never heard one player stand at the Super Bowl podium as they're holding the trophy and say, I'd like to thank social media. Because of them, I'm standing here on top of the mountain. It doesn't work that way. And the other thing, too, I said every team, every player, as you're assessing them, if you're going to give them a fair judgment and grade, you're going to look at the ceiling Mm -hmm. and the floor. Mike, can we call up the Ravens numbers? The first half versus second half? Yep. Yep, Steve. In one football game of Deshaun's 11-game career here in Cleveland, which is far too brief to right. make any passing judgments. I agree. We're still, we're still acquiring information, okay? Too early. But what I would say uh, about the Baltimore game is, you want to see his floor? It's the first half. You want to see his ceiling? It's the second half. In one three-hour span, he showed us he can be one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. If you're 6-20 and 20 for a season, yeah. you're 30% completion percentage, you're out of the league. Yeah. So, But if you're second half to Sean, you're the MVP of the league. So you talk about a disparity between floor and ceiling, you may not find a more glaring example. Look, I get that Patrick Mahomes has his stretches, particularly this year. Before this year, we hadn't seen bad Pat. This year, go back and watch the second half we of the Denver game. Pat. We see bad Pat. We saw bad Pat night. a lot this year, but we know this: when good Pat's on the field, they can win Super Bowls. And he was good Pat in the Super Bowl, and they won it. So, on the whole, I need more love. Stop caring. It doesn't matter. It's not going to put a dollar in your bank account. It's not going to put a touchdown pass on your stats. And I'm not saying. You completely tune out the fans, mm-hmm. but you shouldn't either play for them or worry about them when you're on the field. I'll, I'll say this. Play your game. I'll, I'll say this because I know we got to go. I get your point, right? Deshaun Watson should tune that out. But I think that people have to understand that we are living in a social media era and we that are. we are dealing with different generations of people. He can tune it out all day long, right? But depending on where Deshaun Watson comes from and the type of people that, that's associated with him, they might not tune that out. They and, already know who Deshaun and they, is. They, they might want to be reactive it, to feel like they got to defend Let them their react. boy. Let them react and, and defend. But when he does it, it looks weak. I, I, just, I, just, I just feel like you, you have to be able to take the criticism. It comes with it. It does. It's just that when they get disrespectful and people make things personal, that's when people are triggered emotionally. I get it. But if you don't go looking for it, you won't see it. You can tune it out. You can't completely tune it out because... If you're in the stadium and you're playing bad, you're going to hear the boos. But Deshaun is smart. He's strong mentally. I believe he is. I just think he should care much less about what people are saying about him. Because guess what? Even when he wins, we've talked about this. Because of his past, he's still going to have haters. He's still going to find things yep. on social media that are negative about him. 
You don't find it if you don't look for it. Play football. Worry about the results. Be second half Ravens, Deshaun, and you will be embraced and loved by this city like no other athlete ever has. Speaking of being embraced and loved by the 